So we'll have a message coming to say I've done it in a second. There we go. So it's a great pleasure to welcome back Zoe um, to RADA. Now Zoe um, was in my year group when I first started at RADA, when I was like assistant head of year. So I've known Zoe a long time. Zoe has worked for Cardiff Blues and is now working for Team GB. And she's going to talk about her experiences of studying sport and, and sports science and what it's like to have a career in sport. Now, if there's any questions, put them in the chat and I will monitor the chat. And then um, we'll ask Zoe at the end of her talk um, to answer the questions. OK, Zoe, do you want have you got a PowerPoint or do you want to are you doing it without PowerPoint? No, I was just going to freestyle it. That that's perfect. No slides. That's, that's perfect. And I'll watch the chat and monitor it. Cool. Yeah, I can't actually see when things pop up. So um, yeah, if there's if there's any questions, just feel free to shout them out midway through. Break up what I'm saying, so you don't need to listen to my voice the um, entire way through. Um, so hi everyone. I can't actually see any of you. Um, so if you're yawning with uh, boredness, I apologise in advance. And. Um, as Dr Rose said, my name is Zoe Gilvia. I'm currently the Olympic Relations Manager at Team GB. Um, I left RADA Comp in, I think it was about 2008. Um, so I guess my, my aim of today is to give you a little bit of a, an insight into to my career, kind of from leaving RADA all the way through to, um, to where I'm now and hopefully give you um, a little bit of an insight into what options there are within sport and um, as I said any questions please feel free just to, to shout them out and um, so I guess we may as well start right at the beginning take you all the way back to 2008 and um, when I was in year 13 and um, being completely honest with you I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do in year 13 and um, I remember speaking to a careers advisor um, who kind of gave a very minimal insight into kind of what what might be possible within sport um, and I think the key things that tend to come up are around coaching or um, you know that side of stuff which which isn't something that I ever really wanted to do um, I guess at that stage as well a lot of my friends were, were off to university they were all studying um, quite direct subjects which meant that kind of once you'd finished university you kind of had a job set up so I had a friend that was off to Oxford to study law, obviously then to kind of become a lawyer. I had a friend off to Cardiff who was um, studying optometry, obviously again to, to become an optician. Um, so kind of all really straightforward. And I think when when I told people I was going to go and study sports science, I remember everyone being like, oh, so, you know, so what's the aim? What, what are you going to do after? And I just really didn't know. I didn't know any of the possibilities um, or kind of what, what job it would even kind of lead me to. So... I was determined to go to university. I felt it was the right thing to do at the time. Um, so I kind of had, had my mind set and I was just going to go and, and kind of see see what happened. Um, so results day, um, I didn't get into my first choice of university. Um, I was completely devastated, which I think <clears throat> most of you can, can probably relate to on, on some level. Um, I kind of questioned whether I should be going to university. You know, do I defer my place? Uh, do I take a year out? Do I do something completely different? Um, you know, as potentially what I was looking to do wasn't kind of the, the right route. Um, I It took quite a lot of time to come to terms with it. I spoke to my parents a lot about what, what the right option was and decided to take my, um, my second option, um, university, which was actually probably one of the best things I have ever done. And um, my top two universities were really, really quite different. My first choice was Leeds University, I think it was, um, which is a massive kind of inner city university. It's got so many different campuses set up across the city. Um, all the halls are based kind of away from that, um, which is actually what I thought I wanted. I thought I kind of wanted this real big kind of um, environment. Um, my second choice was, was Brighton Uni, which um, was the polar opposite of, of that uni. It, Brighton University is, is a big university and it's got a couple of main bases, but the campus I was at um, was based in Eastbourne. Um, it was a brand new campus as well. I think it was only about two years old when, when I was there. So the um, where we were, because everything was so compact, um, you had your halls on site, everyone lived kind of a you know 30 minute walk from, from campus. It just meant you kind of got to know everybody. Um, it, it kind of felt like sixth form. Um, 
which was perfect for me. It was not at all what I thought it was going to be, um, but it, it was perfect. So um, I won't bore you with the ins and outs of university life. Um, I'm sure you've you've heard enough about that. Um, but if we just focus on sports science itself, um, kind of going in to the degree, I, as I said, I, I didn't really know what, what to expect. I kind of just thought it would be a bit like PE at school. Um, wish I kind of guess to it to an extent it, it is um but I quickly realized that that sports science isn't just you know a, a, a little bit of science on the side of of sport it's so incredibly vast and um, there are so so many options in that and um, which kind of the modules that you study there within that degree kind of offer their own area of, of a career anyway so you look at things like we studied nutrition and um, biomechanics um, sport analysis, um, psychology, physiology, and actually all of those are a career path within themselves, um, which again is just something I, I never realised when I, I kind of started the course. Um, but there were so, so many options and you could kind of pick and choose in your second year which options you wanted to focus on, which which was great for me, um, partly because it meant I could drop stats, which definitely was never my strong point, um, and could kind of focus on the the modules that were, were more important to me. So I think I did nutrition, psychology, and then I picked two sport ones as well. So focused on gymnastics and dance, which um, did play to my strengths, which, which was good. So fast forwarding to um, graduation, um, I guess kind of at this point, you've been exposed to so many different options on what you could do, where you could go you you kind of expect that when you finish university you've got a plan you know exactly what you're going to do um and as I said you know a lot of my friends were coming out of university with very set kind of career plans um I guess one thing that's that's probably worth saying with with sports science itself um although it is it's a degree um the main way to kind of get into those different elements whether it is nutrition whether it is um psychology it often involves a kind of an additional training year so at the end of the university i had a couple of friends that were doing a conversion course to move on to physio um which was a two-year course i think i had a number of friends that uh, were doing a one-year conversion course to become a teacher um but none of it really appealed to me um, I didn't feel excited about any of those kind of um, areas. It wasn't something that I felt really, really passionate about. Um, so I wasn't 100% sure what I was going to actually do with my degree. Um, I did graduate with a 2-2, um, not normally something that people tend to, to brag about. Um, I've probably not put it on my CV for a couple of years. Um, but I wanted to mention it because I, I, I think it's really important to understand that you hear of so many people that come out of the university with a first and they end up with this fantastic job. Um, myself and, and a number of my friends came out with two twos and we've all, we, you know, we've, we've still been able to kind of chase what our dreams and kind of achieve what we've wanted to. Um, a lot of graduate jobs as well tend to say you need a two one, um, which which is fine. Um, I guess in the sporting world, those those kind of graduate jobs aren't that popular or maybe that common um so yeah as I said I kind of finished university graduated with a 2-2 I had zero clue what I wanted to do um and as probably most people do once you finish university or even when you finish sixth form I spent most of the summer trying to decide what I was going to do and kind of reassessing uh my life I guess um I'd applied for a number of jobs um not really heard anything sport is a incredibly competitive environment um and you know they do tend to look for postgraduate um achievements or you know extracurricular um volunteering and um, other experience kind of hand on hands-on experience um so i just i really wasn't sure what to do and i knew it was important to pick something that i was passionate about and not just going to something for the sake of of working um so I'm previously over a couple of um, summer holidays as a way of making some money while I was at university. I um, worked at a number of events. So I um, can't remember what it's called now, but the uh, Cardiff Stadium, um, Sapphire Gardens, they were hosting the um, it's a cricket event. And um, so I volunteered there um, to work and 
kind of got a bit of a taste for for events, um, which is something I've never even thought of. I didn't even really think of it being a, a career. Um, and I knew that I'd really enjoyed that kind of hands-on experience. So I started looking into jobs um, and didn't really think that I was, I was going to be qualified enough for, for anything. So um, I decided to apply for a master's at Cardiff University. Um, it's safe to say I'm probably not the most academic. Um, it's it's not probably something I would always lead with. Um, so actually, even considering doing a master's was a, was a huge step. Um, for me, I never thought I'd go back into education, um, but I just thought, why not? If this is the sort of route I want to go down, I'm going to have to push myself, go out of my comfort zone and, and you know, try something different. Um, and from the moment I started that master's, I knew I'd made the right decision. Um, I loved going into those classes and kind of learning. I loved doing the extra work. Um, and it was just a completely different mindset, to be honest, to what I had approached my um, undergrad degree with, um, which I wasn't really expecting to be completely honest. Um, and then obviously through my masters, um, we had a number of different speakers come in, kind of specialists within the events industry. Um, one person that came in was the director of fundraising at the Stroke Association, um, who kind of talked us through a new um, walking events that they were kind of scoping out and um, trying to kind of re-establish as their kind of lead fundraising event. Um, and at the end of the kind of presentation, he said, you know, if anyone wants any hands-on experience, this is your way to get into events. Um, so I thought, oh, well, why not? I may as well kind of see if he's got anything available, see if I can help in any way, you know, any experience is good experience. Um, I was the only person in my um, class to actually reach out and see if there were any opportunities. Um, and I think because of that, they actually managed to carve me a bit of a role um, within that that team that were working on this new event. So it actually ended up that as part of my master's project and um, my kind of final piece, I was um, able to kind of review, provide recommendations um, of this new event, which is something I, I kind of never thought I would um, I would be able to do. Um, I had to produce a 20,000 word essay on it, which as I said, as someone who's not very academic, was not the easiest thing, um, but actually got the second highest mark in my whole year group for that final project, which was um, probably still one of my best achievements to date, to be completely honest with you. Um, so I guess from that, I, you know, I kind of decided that actually you've kind of got to throw yourself into this. If you want the experience, you've got to put yourself forward. And um, so whilst I was finishing my master's and um, the opportunity for an internship came up with Cardiff Blues. Um, it was an amazing opportunity to kind of work with a really, really small team, um, which meant you just got exposure to so many different elements. And again, I learned so much more about the kind of professional world of sport than I ever kind of really thought I would and um, so I worked as part of the commercial team um, which meant that I managed different partners um, activations whether that was at games time or whether that was um, kind of just throughout the season I worked very closely on the hospitality program and um, so at each home game we had um, a number of boxes there that we'd, we'd manage their hospitality we also did that at international games when they were being played at the um, the stadium um so it was just an incredible kind of opportunity um and I, I loved it i mean we we used to work kind of 12 hour days um which was was crazy um but i remember that there was just it was a really lovely team environment and it's something that i have learned that comes through working in sport that it is very much an industry where it's kind of all hands on deck no job is too big for anyone. No job is too small for anyone. Everyone just gets stuck in. And I, I remember at Cardiff Blues, um, we had a really, really bad snowstorm one year. And I remember arriving at the um, the pitch and the CEO was was shoveling snow because the game had to go ahead. And actually, if he didn't shovel snow, no one else was going to do it. So um, it's really that kind of environment, So um, which I absolutely loved. And I learned so, so much in my kind of initial six months with them there. So worth remembering with that one, it, it was an internship. Um, I'm sure you kind of know what, what comes hand in hand with internships, but they're not normally paid. Um, I was getting, I think it was about five pound a day. 
um, which being completely honest, by the time I'd even arrived at work, I'd spent my whole daily allowance on a train and a green tea on the way in. Um, so I also decided to work part time in a shop um, just as a way to get kind of uh, some money in. Um, and I was also obviously finishing my master's project. So uh, at 22 to kind of balance those different elements and still kind of be able to deliver on all of those elements um, was, was quite a big a big feast. So um, I kind of stuck with it. There were really, really hard times where I thought, I just, I don't know if I can keep working these really, really long hours, but I knew it was going to be worth it. Um, and actually the internship was meant to be a year, but after six months, they offered me a full-time job there um which was my first kind of proper job in in professional sport um where I was responsible for leading all of the events um activity at the stadium which was um a pretty big jump um from an intern um while all of this was going on um and this is still going back a couple of years but while all this was going on the London 2012 Olympics were due to take place that year um, I also managed to get myself a job with an agency that were leading on it was one of the um, IOC's partners, um, I think it was a law firm, um, and basically I was responsible for delivering their hospitality programme. So we'd have corporate guests fly in, um, we would then take them to a number of different sporting activities um, that were on for the games. I think I went to see, oh my goodness, probably about 10 different um, events at the, at the games, which I think is pretty unheard of, knowing how difficult tickets were and um, to get hold of. Um, we were based out of Brown's Hotel in London for, for four weeks. Um, I, I did kind of land on my feet with, with that job. It was an incredible opportunity um, and an amazing experience. And I think it was at that point I realised that you kind of got this real buzz from the, the Olympic Games. And that was a movement that I was really keen to kind of be involved with. Um, so I guess from from Cardiff Blues, um, I was then I was there for about nine months um, in total, and, and then I was offered a job with UK Sport, who some of you might have have heard of. And so I worked in their commercial team. Um, UK Sport, if you haven't heard of them, are the kind of funding body um, for all NGBs um, across the UK. So they are a, a pretty big organisation. Um, my role was a little bit more exciting than um, kind of working on the funding side of things. Um, I actually led our um, national lottery activation, which mainly focused around um, Olympic and Paralympic athletes um, and kind of utilising them to promote the national lottery. So um, some of you might have seen it if you watched the Rio games, there was quite a lot of mentions of the national lottery from um, athletes, not always done in the most subtle way. Um, but I was able to kind of be involved in a number of really, really cool projects, whether it was um, kind of live filming opportunities, doing stuff with with ITV, um, a number of different um, TV ads. We did photo shoots, magazine interviews, um, and I was kind of responsible for selecting the athletes who were kind of best represent at those different occasions, coordinating the whole kind of uh, event and organising the media as well. So. Um, Again, incredible kind of opportunity. And while I was there, the um, Rio Olympics were taking place um, and I was offered a secondment over to Team GB. So this is back in 2016, I think. Um, so I was offered a secondment to go and work on their, their media team, but based in the UK. Um, and I thought, again, I'm, I'm not one to, to shy away from a new opportunity. So I thought, Do you know what, media is not really something I know too much about. Um, so I thought, why not? Um, and while I worked for them, I led on our kind of fan zone act, uh, media activity. And um, we had quite a few kind of high profile celebs that would come down. And um, so it was kind of managing their their interviews um, and things like that. And I also managed the homecoming event. So when the athletes all land on a plane back to Heathrow, um, we have a, a press conference um, and kind of an a real large host of, of media activity that takes place there. So um, I was responsible for managing all of that, which again was a, a completely different um, element of sport that I, I didn't really know too much about. So it's amazing, amazing experience. And um, following this, I actually took a little bit of a break from the sporting world and um, I decided to do something a bit different, um, which I was really grateful for. Um, it kind of made me realize that actually no, um, 
sport is is what I want to do and it, it's where I'm kind of best suited and um, it only took me about 18 months to to realize that and um, and I think my my decision was was quite heavily influenced by an, another opportunity that um that I had which was um I got to work with Team England on the 2018 Commonwealth Games, which was hosted in Gold Coast, Australia. Um, I, well, I guess my, my role there was, they call it Managing Victory Officer, um, which basically means that once uh, an athlete wins their medal, um, I would get them for 24 hours and I would take them through their BBC interviews, their Sky Sports interviews, and um, their Eurosport interviews. Um, it's an amazing opportunity to kind of have that time with an athlete. They have just won a medal for some of them. It's the absolute pinnacle of their career, especially at the Commonwealth Games. Um, so it's a really amazing moment to kind of be involved with. And it's usually filled with um, a lot of excitement, which is which is pretty incredible. Um, and I guess being based out in the sunny Gold Coast for about three and a half weeks is is not the, uh, the worst place to spend your time. Um, and then I guess whilst I decided I wanted to move back into sport, it was um, a bit of a happy coincidence um, that a role came up with, with Team GB as an Olympic relations manager. Um, again, this was a completely new area of sport for me. It was one that I didn't know too much um, about when I applied, but um, I felt I knew enough about the Olympic movement and kind of how things work that I, I could kind of be able to hit the ground running. Um, and was obviously successful in that. Um, so my role now is, is actually incredibly um, diverse, I guess. I lead on all of our um, events activation. Um, one of the programmes I'm currently working on is our UK activation over games time. So how do we engage with partners and key stakeholders over the kind of two and a half weeks that the, the games will take place this summer. Um, I also run our youth engagement programme um, I lead on relationships with the IOC, which I think if some of you are doing A-level P, you might have heard of the IOC. Um, and then again, in about three weeks time, I will be hopping on a plane to Tokyo um, to take on that managing victory role again um, out in, in Japan. Um, so that's kind of where I am at the minute. And that's kind of how I've got there. It's it's been a bit of a roller coaster to say the least um i've kind of thrown myself into every opportunity that was that was presented in front of me and this is where we've got to thanks so much zoe so if there's any questions for zoe put them in the chat now i think pick up a few things i think it's really good what you said that sometimes people think that you have to have an absolute plan you have to have everything mapped out and it, life doesn't work out like that, is it? And, you know, I think you, what you're saying is just explore as many opportunities as you can and you'll find the role that you're most happy with and doing, you know? And I think yeah. I talk to lots of sixth formers, they do think that they have to have everything mapped up. And it's quite scary at the moment because they're now thinking, what are they going to apply for for uni? Are they going to do apprenticeship? What course are they applying for? And I keep saying to them all the time, look, pick a subject that you enjoy. Yeah, pick a subject at the moment that you enjoy, you, that you really have a passion for, because the opportunities will follow from that. I think it's it's a really good point. And uh, to be honest, that's the only that's all I base my university decision on in the end is, you know, it's I think at 18, it's really, really difficult to decide what you want to do for the rest of your life. And actually choosing something, you know, if you're passionate about sport, choosing something like sports science and kind of understanding that just because you've done a sports science degree doesn't mean you need to be a sports scientist and it doesn't mean you need to be a PE teacher. There's all this whole other world. I mean, if I look at my year group, there was one person from my year group that has gone on to be a sports scientist. And um, that is it out of about 120, I think, were in my year. Um, I think about 20 maximum of them have gone on to be teachers um, and the rest have all gone on to really really different kind of diverse um, opportunities whether it's physio whether it's you know out of sport some people have done as well so um yeah I think the most important thing is to, is to do something you really enjoy um it sounds really cliche but I think if you do something you really enjoy it, it doesn't really feel like working I mean i my job is is really quite nice at the minute and it's obviously very exciting with with tokyo coming up um but you know we we work 12 14 hour days at the minute and um, 
but you do it because you love it not because you know you, you feel like you have to it's, it's because you actually really enjoy it and you kind of want it to be a success so I think if you find something you enjoy the rest will follow fab um so everyone put questions in the chat if you've got questions a couple of things that people have asked me coming up to this is I've got students at the moment that are interested in sport and universities now are offering a real broad range of courses so you can do sport, sports coaching, sports coaching with rehabilitation, sports science, you got everything. And I think sometimes they don't know where to start. So, you know, you obviously went for the sports science route. Do you think it helped you having the doing the sports science, even though you didn't go into that field because you had an awareness of what's going on in that side of the sports industry? Yeah, I think sports science for me was a really good option. Um, again, it's, it's quite broad. Um, and I think if you're if you're not 100 percent sure of what what you want to do, um, it gives you a lot of it gives you a really kind of vast insight into all different areas, um, which is something I was quite keen to do, because, as I said, I really didn't know what I was going to do. Um, but, you know, I, I know um, individuals that did sport coaching um, and there's always possibilities to kind of change when you're, you're at university and you can pick modules then that, that kind of suit you. But um sports science to me was was quite vast so it, it kind of gave you an insight into a load of different areas which if you you know if you kind of want to still kind of seek out your options it, it's probably quite a good one to be honest yeah lots of students at the moment we have a few students that are looking at there are some unis offering these sports management courses which are obviously you know um good as well um but I think that obviously you probably get on a sports science course, you probably had a chance to do modules in terms of management and organising people anyway. So yeah. it's probably giving you a broader thing in terms of that. Yeah, it, it definitely does. And, you know, I, what we had, so we're at Brighton Uni, the um, Eastbourne campus um, is basically where all of the sport courses happen. So at my campus, we had P with QTS, we had sports science, we had sports coaching, we had sports management. And actually there were lectures where we'd all be in the same room because we're all doing those kind of crossover um, options. Um, obviously we would have separate ones and I guess with sports science, it, it is kind of what it says in the name. There is scientific elements there, you know, biomechanics, um, even nutrition to a point um, and kind of performance analysis, they're, they're really scientific. Um, so I would say there there are elements of those. Um, when I went into year two, I I stayed away a little bit from from those. They probably weren't my strength, um, and kind of went down the more kind of psychology route. Um, but it gives it gives you options. Um, and as I said, I think you know the the first year I found in sports science is kind of an it is an elevated level of PE. So you don't go in and you don't feel massively overwhelmed. Um, you learn a lot. But it's not um, it's not so overwhelming that it's something you've never, ever done. Um, and then actually you kind of you've got your grounding then. And then for year two, you can start picking modules that, that would work best for you. Yeah, I, I might have missed this. So when you might have said so you did P. What would, yeah. did you do? A level. Do you do a level biology with it? Um, no. What, I can't remember what you did. What, what were the other two? that did you I, do? Um, I did biology AS. Um, yeah. Then I did psychology, and I think I did performance studies. Oh yeah, okay, we, yeah, because we used to have done that then. Yeah, yeah, Fab. yeah, because yeah. because lots of our students are now are obviously thinking. I mean, they're they're in the point of what subject to if they're going to drop one in year thirteen. That's why. I, so I said that, and lots of students, um, all our students have come, you know, have got the grades to come back into year thirteen, which is fantastic. So we have, you know. That, that's really really good so those are the sorts of can, um, decisions they're thinking about at the moment so it's good so you know sometimes some of our students think oh they have to do a level biology or they have to do a science with it but you can see that you can be successful on a sports science course and and do that you know w without that background and psychology must be a really useful subject to do yeah psychology was really good and actually um before i went to university i was a little bit torn whether to go and do just psychology or do um sports science and and um, sports science trumped it for me purely because again back to that point it was what i was more passionate about um and actually i was quite lucky that one of the modules i did whilst at doing sports science at uni was was psychology and actually it then had that real um kind of sport influence it wasn't kind of general psychology it was that real kind of sports led um so yeah it's um i've lost my train of thought um 
yeah, I completely lost my train of thought. No, no, that's fine. I mean, it'd be great because I, psychology is, is really popular at RADA and there are lots of students who do PE. And Miss Murphy, I don't know if she taught you psychology, Miss Murphy's still teaching psychology at RADA. Yeah. So Miss Murphy, Miss Downing's not here anymore, but Miss Murphy oh. does. And, you know, psychology is equally as popular. We have, we probably have about 40 students, 50 students in a year group picking it. So it is a really, really popular subject in terms of that. Lots of students now, um, obviously going to be thinking about, especially in year 12, thinking about personal statements and stuff. And they're, and lots of them, obviously, lots of our students play for sporting teams. But of course, that's been hugely disruptive with the pandemic in terms of playing that. Um, so, you know, when you applied for um, uni or whatever, you're applying for jobs and stuff, are there any good volunteering opportunities you think that would be quite useful for them to, to do, even though, you know, considering the pandemic? Because obviously live sports opening up a bit now, isn't it? Yeah, hopefully. Um, yeah, I, I would say next year is a absolutely huge year of sport. Um, it's the obviously 10 year anniversary since London 2012, um, which is crazy. Um, and I think they'll that is obviously in itself is going to kind of elevate sport to a whole nother level when people start kind of looking back as to what was achieved in London 2012. Um, obviously, you've got the um, Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. Um, they are currently looking for volunteers and um, so I would strongly strongly suggest that if anybody would like to volunteer in Birmingham that um, you check out Team England's website and uh, hopefully that will point you in the right direction and um, the one thing I will say and um, for me with with kind of getting jobs um, the best experience you can have is that hands-on experience. Um, I know I said I went and did did a master's, and yes, that that did help me to to a certain level, and you know it kind of helped my personal development. Um, but that hands-on experience is you can't replace it with anything. Um, any opportunity, as I said to you, any opportunity that you get offered or you can put yourself forward for, I'd hundred percent say do it. Um, you know that as you said, there's going to be loads of sport that, that starts to open out. And, you know, even if you can go and work one Saturday at, you know, um, the cricket that that's on or, um, you know, even when the the rugby um, comes back in the in the autumn, you know, is there something you can go and do there? They're always looking for hospitality staff. Um, it's that sort of stuff. There, there's going to be a lot that comes up. You'll also have um, the athletics next year as well. Um, the British trials, it's probably a bit too late to apply to um, work at those as they're this weekend. Um, they're actually an Olympic qualifying event, so that is going to be a very interesting one to watch. Um, but next year, the um, they'll have the athletics on as well, which again is an amazing one to kind of be, be involved with. Um, what you will find with sports events is that it is normally run by an incredibly small team. Um, you see these huge events that go on and there is normally really, really minimal staff that have put it on, um, which actually puts you in a really good position because it means that, you know, you won't just be doing one set role. Um, you will probably be taking on about 10 or 12 different jobs. Um, but again, you, you learn from it and you don't always need to, to volunteer. Um, sometimes it's it's a good thing to do and it's definitely a great thing to have on your CV. But there are paid opportunities out there as well. So definitely keep your eyes open for those. Um, but as I said, sport is an incredibly um, difficult kind of industry to get into. Um, but I think once you get your foot in that that door, so whether you start doing it now, whether you wait till after university, um, getting your foot in that door is, is really important. So um, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely start getting your name out um, and start looking for, for opportunities, internships, um, volunteering opportunities at live events um, is, is definitely the way to go. Fab. Um, I'm looking at the chat. So again, put questions in the chat, everyone. Sometimes people don't like to put them in the chat. They tend to ask me afterwards. So I may end up emailing you some questions if, they, if they're doing that. Um, some of our students, when I talk to them about sports science, they are passionate about sport. They enjoy BTEC sport. They enjoy PE. Um, they may they worry sometimes that then they may not be like a an elite athlete or you know they may they may play in school they may play for county in terms like that do you, um and i'm trying to reassure them that's not a barrier um because on your sports science course you 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 probably had um a great a range of sporting abilities in terms of performance yeah. yeah definitely and it's you know um 
I think to be good at sports science, you don't necessarily need to be good at sports. Um, normally, if you do sports science, it's because you're interested in sports and you probably play a bit of it, whether it's a bit of football, whether it's, you know, rugby, gymnastics, whatever your sport is. It, it You know, if you're passionate about sports science, it's, it's probably because you do sport. Um, I can't sit here and say I was ever an elite athlete. Um, I did a fair amount of sport, um, but I was never an elite athlete. Um, the, the only time that I guess that kind of comes into university life is if you want to join a a club um and that's kind of the only time that you your kind of sport and ability is is judged but I would say um with sports science as I said you can kind of start picking modules what I did in my final year to play to my strengths was I actually was offered the opportunity to do a gymnastics module and a, a dance module so um rather than doing um, biomechanics and stats I chose to go down the um, kind of the sporting routes um, which you've got the opportunity to do so it allows you to play to your strengths so you know if if you're not the best at, at any kind of sport it doesn't necessarily matter you can focus on the you know the, uh, the other modules but if you're like me and your, your kind of strength is within those those sporting activities you can focus down that route as well um, it's worth saying that I actually think my degree when I signed up to it was sport and exercise science. Um, and then depending on which modules you chose, um, depended on what you, you kind of graduated with. So because I went down that sport route, I ended up with a sport science degree. And um, I've got friends that went very much down the kind of health route. So they ended up with a exercise science degree and then you've got some people that did a, a real kind of clear mix which is then the sport and exercise science so even within sports science there's just so many opportunities fab and some of our students um lots of students who are doing a sport will say to me that ultimately they quite like loads say they want to work almost like a physio or working in um, sports rehabilitation so that tends to be really popular and then when this when people's uh, apply for just physio courses they struggle to get in and I say this to them it's not don't it's mainly because there's lots of older people who are applying for those courses and there's limited thing so do you have many friends on your course that that moved into that field yeah it's, a physio is an interesting one because um when I was in year 11 that's what I decided I wanted to do I wanted to be a sports physio and um, and I actually went to do some work experience um in Cardiff but I think I was there for about a week. Um, and what I will say is that if you want to go down the sport physio route, it is incredibly competitive. Um, and obviously the best way to go about that, you'd need to do a physio degree to then be able to specialise. Um, but the sport side of physio is such a minor, minor part of the kind of overall physio um, degree. Um, I've actually had a friend, as you said, a lot of older people tend, tend to do it. One of my friends who is now... Uh, I think she's 33 um, and she started her physio course when she was 30 um, and she's just graduated with a, a first class degree from um, from her uni and she's now working as a, as a physio in the NHS um, but it, it's poles apart she works a lot with um, dementia patients and um, obviously people with with lung difficulty seems to be a, um, a key one and um, it's very very limited that she gets to do the kind of rehab side of things um, so I would say if you're looking at doing kind of sports rehabilitation, you can do degrees in that as well, yeah. um, which which is a really good route. Um, and actually, I think from doing that, you get end up with a lot of the qualifications that kind of come alongside it. Um, if you're looking to do sports physio, um, you've got to be passionate about physio in general um, because it's it's a pretty grueling um, and hardcore degree. Um, amazing the stuff that you can kind of learn through that, but. If it's kind of sport physio you wanted to go into, you'd probably best off doing the full degree and then specialising over. Um, I did have friends, however, who did the three year sports science degree with me and then did a two year conversion course um, over to physio as well. So that that is a route. If you decide at the end of a sports science degree that you want to go into physio, you, you can do a conversion course. and You don't necessarily need to start the whole three years again. And that would be that's um, really good advice because. We often say to students, look, you write a personal statement, you say you want to apply for physio and it's all about sport and you have to realise that they get so many people who do that and it's almost like you don't understand that that is the minor part of the whole role. 
And, you know, that's just one small sector of being a physio. So going that route, the sports exercise science and then doing the conversion is probably going to be the best route for someone really interested in sport to actually yeah. specialise in that area. Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say that whatever kind of you decide, whatever route you kind of decide to go down, if you can get some work experience within that, um, it's so valuable. Um, I'll be completely honest, I did a week of physio um, work placement and it put me right off. Um, but, and I had been set for the previous five years that that was all I wanted to do. I wanted to be a sports physio um, and I did five days and it completely changed my mind. Um, so it's definitely worth making sure you've got a real kind of deep understanding of, of what that job could could entail um, before you go for it. But that, do you know what? That that's a good point though, because doing work experience, I know it's difficult at the moment with the pandemic or even virtual work experience. Even if you have an experience that puts you off, that's actually a good experience. Could you mean you don't yeah. actually apply for that? That's a positive thing mm -hmm. that you've you've tried something, and that's what we're saying to the students at the moment. Try an online course. Try a volunteering thing. Even if you don't enjoy it, that's good because you've you've realised that this may not be the route for you. Yeah. Oh, no, I, honestly, I, com I completely agree with that. I Trust me, I've done many work experiences that have, have definitely not worked out for me. Um, but you do, you, you find, as I said, I, I ended up working at um, Sapphire Gardens for the cricket um, and absolutely fell in love with it. But that was only because I, I wanted a summer job more than anything. I wasn't even yeah. thinking about a, a kind of career in events at, at all at that point. Um, but it, it's definitely, it, it kind of, it's quite eye-opening, I think, even being able to shadow somebody, not necessarily having to kind of get involved and in necessarily doing the work, but shadowing somebody um, within the industry you, you want to do is is really insightful. Fab. Thanks so much, Zoe. Um, I'm gonna, while they, they think if there's one, you know, I'm going to give them a final warning for questions. If there are any questions, put them in the chat. The only thing I was going to ask is, is it difficult with sport at the moment in the roles you are? Because like, we have a lot of guest speakers here who work at universities and stuff, and they're on short-term contracts. Yeah, one year, two year. Is it very similar in the field that you're in at the moment? Because lots of industries are like that. Um, yeah. I just wondered if it's similar for sport and in those sort of roles. Um, so it can be. When I joined UK Sport, um, I guess it kind of depends the the company you work with and kind of the nature of what they do. So UK Sport was very focused, obviously, as I said, they're the kind of funding body. Um, so everything they do is, is very process driven. It's actually driven from kind of government. So um, there's no kind of really, really busy time and then kind of nothing, then a busy time. So they don't feel the need to have loads of staff at one point and then not have them. So jobs there are, are quite consistent. And actually, when I worked there, there was people there that have been there for kind of 10, 15 years, which is crazy to me. Um, Team GB does work slightly differently. And if you're kind of looking at working within an organization that does focus around a specific event so whether it's um you know like the six nations or the olympic games or the commonwealth games um that massively comes in these big peaks and kind of troughs um so normally with team gb they um kind of 18 <coughs> 18 months out from a, the start of the games and um, that's when you'll see a real ramp up in in roles that become available and then normally about six months out, that's when they get kind of their additional games time staff in. So to give you an idea, um, Team GB normally has about 80 people that work there. And um, over games time, we go up to about 350 staff. Wow. Um, to kind of deliver what we need to deliver. And that goes across all areas. So that's from doctors, from physios, all the way down to media teams and um, arrives and departure staff um hq staff so it's um if that really does come in kind of those highs and lows um <clears throat> obviously it has been a little bit of a, a weird year um so and actually off the back of um tokyo we've got six months until we go to beijing for the winter games um which is going to come around very quickly and then obviously about six months after that we've got the commonwealth games and then about 18 months until Paris um, so it's um, it's just going to be a, a quite full on I think in the world of sport for the next uh, kind of two and a half years so. So when you go to these fabulous places do you do you because obviously you, you, you're based in hotels <laughs> all the time do you get any time to actually see the place? 
Um, it really varies. Um, it, uh, do you know what? It sounds awful. It sounds so glamorous being able to travel to these places, but when you are there, you know, you you work hard and you are there for a reason. Um, Gold Coast was an interesting one because <clears throat> it was um, Commonwealth Games tend to be a little bit quieter um, until kind of the medals really, really start to kick off. So we actually had, I landed about three days before the games even started. So I had three days of kind of exploring, adjusting, getting myself kind of used to the time zone, um, which was really quite nice. And, um, you know, you couldn't go too far, but kind of just being able to explore the, that kind of area, which which was pretty amazing. It's not somewhere I'd ever been before. So um, that was amazing. And um, quite often you're offered the opportunity to change your flight home. Um, so my original plan for, for Tokyo was to actually stay out for an extra three weeks. Um, and kind of explore and obviously it was meant to be last year and um, obviously this year that's not going to be possible um, we're on tight um, restrictions for Tokyo this year so um, unfortunately there, there won't be any any sightseeing in, in Tokyo or any um, kind of real delving into the, the culture or anything which is a bit of a shame um, Japan's somewhere I've always wanted to go um, but it's just an excuse for another another trip out there but you, you can't you do get a, a couple of days normally um, but that's probably it. <laughs> Fab. Well, thanks ever so much, Zoe, for giving up your time. Good luck. Um, let's have loads of medals brought home in there. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, everyone, for giving up your evening. Thanks, Zoe. Um, good luck, everyone. And um, I'll see you in school tomorrow, everyone. Thanks very much. Thanks. Thanks, Zoe. See ya. Bye. Bye.